my dear friends in our previous lecture we have tried to understand earth's interior earth's internal structure and composition and how exactly these are controlling earth's dynamic nature and that the earth crust is most dynamic and this crust is dynamic because of the forces operating below it we have tried convection current within the mantle and how depending on the nature of these it is varying from place to place and we have reached to the conclusion that the plate boundaries are more dynamic than the plate interior therefore the plate boundaries whether two plates converge where we have subduction trench etc or plate divergence where new material is added building mountain like underwater and pushing the crust on either side and that is also another plate boundary in between the plate is nearly passive i do not say 100% passive no part of the earth is free from earthquake or volcanoes but the magnitude of this volcano or earthquake and the frequency of these occurrences are more along the plate boundary till now we have discussed earlier now we will continue here onwards i said plate boundaries are more active than the plate interior and here building material from the depth comes to the surface and build mid oceanic ridges like don't we have this kind of ridges in the land or one thing why the earth plate interior are not that active or why they are not totally passive such questions come before going to further what all this happen we shall try to get some insight input from here and then go further we said convergent plate boundary moving together sorry moving together one plate moves below the other we call a subduction crust is a rigid body when two plates come and collide they brittle material they fail the rupture and then earthquake and when they collide there is a deep in front of that a trenching etc these are all plate subduction this not necessarily under land or at the interface of land and sea this is somewhat deeper only not close to the continent not deep inside somewhere here also this can happen it can also happen below the two land masses i show you that one this generally happens only in the mid sea because the crust is very thin here and it is from the mantle materials can easily reach out here to the surface therefore lava or volcanic activity they build ridges we call mid oceanic ridges now i have said the plate interior here are relatively passive not 100% passive because the forces that operate along the boundary do not operate here but they are not totally passive there also what volcanic and earthquake can happen the reason is the composition of the material although i have said cl sial in the continent sial they are not uniform at several locations there may be some radioactive materials concentrated 
they disintegrate releases heat heat accumulated may be responsible for a higher geothermal gradient than elsewhere we expect geothermal gradient common 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 here but somewhere if radioactive elements are concentrated they also release heat add to the geothermal gradient therefore higher heat accumulation can cause volcano here therefore plate interior is also not free from the volcano volcano means sudden release of large quantity of lava can lead to earthquake earthquake can lead to volcano these are all complementary often therefore we do have volcano similarly earth behaves a rigid material crust is and this rigid material there is a uneven distribution of the load wherever the load accumulation exceeds the elastic limit plastic limit then they may break they fail then also we have earthquake we will discuss this little later now what we want to conclude from this here is plate boundaries are active plate interior is also though not that active there also we have earthquakes and volcanoes one transform fault boundary moving sideways this is another type of motion we will try now these are the major tectonic plates these are all we have pacific plate this is we have said earth crust is broken into divided into several small plates and these individual plates either move away or move together and which are these plates the pacific plate we have the south american plate we have the north american plate antarctica plate eurasian plate indo australia we have the plate south african plate these are all individual plate what is a plate a part of a land mass plate and these they move apart or move together example africa india antarctica were together we have seen gondwana continent now they are broken and this mood here india mood here africa here they have moved away from this is the plate boundary they have moved there they have moved there they have moved here and they move away from each other and then they may come together this plate and this plate have come together sutured here therefore something happens wherever these two plates come and collide something happens this when two plates move away when these two plates move away we have seen in the previous diagram that those are the regions where magma from the depth are added and brought to the surface and these are the plate boundary where two plates converge one plate may move below the other so these are some of the important plates and these boundaries are active regions of the earthquake and volcano yes now just now i have said these were gondwana continent there are several continents and individual continents moved in a different direction so also this antarctica africa plateau this is madagascar this is india they moved away india moved in different 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 and they moved so way in that the shape also changed today it is the present shape of india originally india were somewhere to the south of the equator and we are today north of the equator how much distance we have traveled imagine over a geological period and throughout this travel that remained active and today india is here it's all the phenomenon of the plate movement this is a schematic picture how south indian plateau collided with eurasian plateau and how himalaya developed we call this was a sea thetis we call and there was a sea this landmass 
collided with the land mass and because this south indian plateau moved below this eurasian plateau subduction there a lot of volcanic or magma erupted central core of the himalaya is made up of such igneous rocks and this is filled up with the sediments brought from this and this we call foothills what himalayan shivalik etc we call there are a lot of sediments are deposited when this collided with the entire sea escaped to land mass collided and they rose into himalaya whatever the sediments they have compressed and resulted in the fold like pattern this is a phenomenon of the two plates colliding so now you see this land mass land mass are together now india extended up to himalaya also this originally only this was india and it migrated lot from south africa and madagascar in this process in between so many things have happened that is we have heard saint mary island what is that a lava came there when these two continents moved away for that driving force was the magma coming from the depth that required the space they have drived the plate on either side so magma coming from the depth drives the plate and they move apart and they call and cause this kind of process in this process many lands united many lands broken this happened in the geological past several times this is very important important insight for example somewhere 2500 million years back these continents had drifted and lot of material from the depth they came and they also brought denser material like gold therefore if i have to search for gold obviously my first is wherever those 2500 million years rocks are there is one and somewhere around 1500 million also like that wherever we have again there is a gold means the metallurgy is also related to plate tectonics if i am interested in the metals i have to look for this plate tectonic history wherever i can focus so we also equate trace gold farming events to the plate tectonics etc so plate tectonics not only decide upon determine the active regions of the earth crust where earthquake and volcanoes are active they are also responsible for bringing new materials and new metals to the earth crust where by surface process they can get concentrated therefore this is an important aspect for many of us now how exactly see this is the two plates move away and when these two plates move away gap the materials added from the asthenosphere to this region and thus it grows no more, more materials added it grows we call constructive margin new materials added now these two are two plates come and collide one plate move below the other this we call destructive margin part of the crust move down that may even broken down and sink and they may melt they form magma therefore the existing crust move below and they may melt and they are lost this is crust destruction take place destructive margin and then we have neither this is another type of movement where two crustal blocks move relative to each other there is no loss of material no gain here we have a gain from the depth here we have material lost into the deeper but here nothing has happened this is conservative margin no loss no gain and this is because of relative movement of the block these are transform faults this commonly happens in the interior of the plate i said interior of the plate is not 100% free from any such uh, destruction or like that there it is not 100% free from earthquake or volcano this can also happen 
generally this happens generally i am not saying 100% but generally these things do happen in the plate interior these are different type of plate now which are all the dynamic these are all the divergent plate margins here all magma from great depth reach to the sea surface and this sea bottom and they solidify this materials added this material requires a space they drive the plate away and is the place where new material from the depth comes here and those are all important in the sense along with the magma we call hydrothermal solution high temperature solution this solution has ability to dissolve many metals and those metals also come to here and they can get concentrated in the geological part it also came elsewhere these are the active regions where hydrothermal solutions come this hydrothermal solution example many of the iron ore nickel or who me this material deposition is related to this process this is the divergent plate boundary and we have mid oceanic regions these are all the this i have showing here this this here and these are the regions this these are the ridges where the depth of sea is very less as compared to on either side because lava come here or magma come here they deposit and they build and they form huge mountain like these ridges are built along the ridges new material added and they drive the plates away from yes there are many convergent boundaries just now i have showed divergent example here in the previous act, i have showed the india this south india with tibetan plateau collided and we have the himalaya developed and these are all we have wherever volcanic mount fuji japan we have materials and we have mount less california there also and and in south america these are all the places where we do have a volcanoes and divergent sorry the convergent plate margins etc now with this basic idea we have understood why plate margins are active etc now with this we will try to understand further interior internal structure and composition and we should now with that knowledge able to identify which are the suitable for construction which are active zones of the earthquake and volcano safe zones etc yes what we know in every earthquake three types of seismic waves we call three type of energy waves or waves simply are generated they are called p wave s wave and l wave p wave we also call primary wave it has a ability to travel through liquid as well as a solid secondary wave s wave it can travel only through solid but not that high velocity as p wave p wave has a higher velocity s wave has lesser velocity in the same medium s wave do not propagate through the liquid now if i have any earthquake anywhere 2 3 4 earthquakes based on that i get some input and able to understand internal structure and composition we will try so this is a s wave from this depth to this depth they move with a certain velocity and on this boundary there is a sudden change in the velocity on reaching this depth there is a sudden change in the velocity at this depth where there is a sudden change in the velocity we call crust and asthenosphere and then from here to here we call 
crest mantle discontinuity. S wave started with certain velocity, in general gradually increases in their velocity. This increase in velocity corresponds to increase in the density. On reaching this depth, say 30, 40 kilometer, etc., there is a sudden change in their velocity. And henceforth, they travel progressively with the increasing velocity, that is, progressively increasing density of the materials are here, that is the inference. On reaching this depth, S wave do not propagate. In the laboratory experiment we have tried, S wave do not travel through liquid. Therefore, what is our inference? Perhaps at this depth, there is a liquid like material, which stop propagation of S wave. We do not. Let us see P wave, primary wave. P wave has a higher velocity, but the ratio of P and S wave velocity in a given medium, here, 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 that ratio remains the constant. That means, if P wave travels with a 10, here it is a 5, 1 is to 2 ratio. So, if at this depth it may be 20, here it may be 10, means that ratio is maintained. P wave also travels with progressively increasing velocity. In between there is a minor variation that is correspond to upper layer of the crust, lower layer of the crust we have called asthenosphere lower level layer. On reaching this depth there is a sudden change in the velocity we have called mantle crust discontinuity, Mohorovic discontinuity. There is a sudden change. This P wave also should progressive increase in the velocity. It means there is a gradual increase in the density of the material. Fun is P wave on reaching this depth, there is a sudden drop in the velocity. We have seen only their velocity here, sudden drop. This do not travel. Therefore, is it a fluid like material? The question arises, but it is not a fluid like material because we have already said it should have yielded to the attraction of sun or moon. It has not happened. Therefore, it is not fluid. Now, and some few kilometer depth, this wave travel with a constant velocity. And again here onward, they travel with progressive increase in their velocity. It means there is a co constant and there is a sudden drop in the velocity. What must be the nature of the material? Now, here onwards again there is increase in the velocity. Now, this increase in velocity corresponds to the material rich in nickel, iron, etc. And here also this velocity corresponds to the material rich in Si, Mg, Fe, we have called Sima. Now, interest is about this, why there is a sudden drop in the velocity. Just now we said it is not a fluid. Fluid like because S wave do not propagate. It is not totally fluid because its velocity is not that low as it travels in the liquid. At the same time, it cannot be fluid. It did not yield to the attraction. What should be the material? We can compare the velocity of the wave in different solid materials. We know if a material is a crystalline, it is very compact, velocity is high. If it is an amorphous substance like, its velocity drops. Now, its velocity correspond to that of an amorphous layer like. Therefore, it may not be liquid, an amorphous pitch and tar like material which stop a propagation of S wave, but permit P wave to travel though with a lower velocity. And we have constant velocity. This is drop in the velocity, constant Again, another funny material. Why there is a constant? A pressure applied on a solid material 
should change with the part. If a pressure applied to a fluid, it is uniformly distributed. A fluid like one, but just now said it is an amorphous, but plastic like pitch and tar like material. Then onwards it increases in its velocity. It reaches further, there is a sudden increase in velocity like this. This is the nature of S and P wave. This is commonly observed in many earthquakes. If this is the earth, if I have a number of recording stations throughout, I can make some inferences from the input or data I get from this velocity depth curve. This is curve is nothing but a, here is a velocity. Here, this is the depth. Velocity depth curve helps me to understand internal structure and composition more better. Okay. Now, just now we have said yes wave do not travel through liquid or amorphous material pitch tar like. So, if we have a point of origin of the earthquake, focus we call. And then we have P wave, S wave, P wave, S wave, P wave, S wave generated. They travel with a certain velocity. On reaching this depth, P wave propagate. S wave do not propagate. If these are a picture for S wave, S wave on reaching this depth, they stop. Here onwards, they refract, they change their direction, reach here, 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 etc. If you have a number of recording stations, yes waves are recorded all here. If we have any recording station here, yes waves do not travel because on reaching this depth, they stop their propagation. They do not travel further, therefore no records of a yes wave. See here we have P wave. P wave refract if this is the origin. The refract, refract in all these recording stations. They are recorded. We get a P wave. There are certain waves, they travel in all the directions. Those which reach this depth, they undergo refraction. Change in the nature of the material, density of the material, they undergo refraction at this boundary. Again reaching this boundary, once again they refract. Therefore, because of this refraction process, no P wave recorded here. No P wave here, here to here, they are recorded. Here to here, they are not recorded. Here again, they are recorded. Now, P waves come here directly. They have undergone refraction, undergone refraction and finally reach. What may happen to their energy? They have undergone twice refraction. And this here, they reach rapidly, they are traveling through maybe one medium without much modification in their energy. They are all recorded here, rapidly reach. They, on reaching this boundary, they undergo refraction modification. On reaching this, once again they undergo refraction. Because of this, they get modified, their energy become very less. Or modified. Similarly, here also the other side. In general, directly above the point where epicenter and we focus high energy, epicenter origin. So, from here to 0 to 105 degree, we have P wave, we have S wave. Both P and S waves are there. P wave travels with a higher velocity. S wave travels with a lower velocity. First P wave burn hits the region, ground vibrates. Immediately S wave come, they vibrate. So vibration duration can be more because of P and S wave. And therefore damage from here to here is high. Any area located within 0 to 105 degree with respect to epicenter or focus, damage can be high. Those regions which are beyond 105 to 142 degree, we call shadow region. Irrespective of the magnitude of the earthquake, 
no p wave no s wave because their refraction pattern they get modified s wave uh, that uh, do not travel p wave get modified therefore no records in this region this is a shadow zone free from earthquake and this is both p and s wave here to here here to here no p no s wave and here onwards only p wave and only p wave S wave do not, therefore once the ground vibrates that is lost, there is no more vibration further. Wherever P and S wave, P wave first comes, start, vibration, then S wave comes, then vibration, possible here in all this. Therefore, if we have one more layer, they can undergo refraction, again duration of vibration can also be more. What we try to generalize is, if we have a number of layers, number of layers within this region, they also undergo refraction and they reach a given point at a different pulse of time. Therefore, duration of vibration can be more here. This is more, with more number of layers, the duration of vibration can be less if it is a simple composition, uniform composition. Fortunately or unfortunately, it is not in our hand. There are several layers even within the crust we said based on this velocity, there are this different layers, asthenosphere, crust, lower crust, upper crust, people define differently. The intensity of the earthquake is more here. And we may ask why 0 to 105 degree there is no earthquake because of the shadow zone nature, refraction of P wave and S wave nature. We do not get S wave, do not travel through fluid, P wave get refracted and deviate their direction. Therefore, no waves are generated. This is a seismically inactive, we call a shadow zone. This is a high seismic risk, no risk, moderate risk. Now, all these are an input for us to decide upon what kind of structure we have to have, what kind of precaution, etc. Now, I have mentioned earthquake. What exactly is earthquake? It is a sudden movement or shaking of the earth's surface. And duration not last for several minutes, etc., only few seconds, but it can cause heavy damage. Now, there are different theories of origin of earthquake, especially in the plate tectonic concept or within the rigid crust, a rigid material. It is so simple, if I apply pressure on one, I can bend, 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 bend some particular. If the limit of this is crossed, it may break somewhere and once it breaks, the energy which is stored here sudden releases, it travels in all the direction. That is a material move, this is like this, I press down, I press up or holding here, I press up. Therefore, now they initially bend, finally they fracture. And this we call fault, dislocation. In a rigid body, this the force or pressure is responsible for breaking of the rigid material on breaking, sudden release of energy. That energy travels in the form of elastic waves we call P and S wave in all the direction that causes the earthquake. Example, here. Yeah. We have the focus, the point, and then we have the travels, travels, they cause a faults along this. This is the point directly above the focus on the point where intensity of the earthquake is maximum. We then away from this, their intensity decreases because the shortest distance, perpendicular distance is the shortest distance and energy or damage is more away from it less and there is because of movement of this kind of movement 
the faults that is a dislocation movement this lead to chain of activity chain of earthquakes also and how we can record it i say magnitude of the earthquake intensity of the earthquake we have referred there are different waves one which is responsible for vertical movement there is another responsible for horizontal movement p and s waves we have so what exactly how i can record now there are different types of instruments and make for example i have a spring this entire unit is embedded or um, mounted on a rigid ground when a ground vibrates this entire unit vibrates when this vibrates this, this very sensitive spring this vibrates and this spring is attached with a pen this pen is attaching attached to a rotating drum on this this is rotating the speed of which i can manage i can set depending on my liking periodically once in a month i want to record once in a week once in 24 hours accordingly its a speed i can adjust on this are the records means a graph paper is attached to record once this pen is touching this graph and when this vibrates it is like this it is vibrates and it is recorded and this is rotating drum all round it it is recorded and then i take it out the record in whatever it may be it may be simple graph sheet i can take it out and record it this is another this is a vertical motion this is a horizontal motion similar setup a, a, a found uh, rigid foundation on which i have a entire unit have mounted whenever there is a earthquake there is a horizontal motion of the ground and this horizontal motion again a spring a, this is a pen touching this and here there is a spring that is not there and this only horizontal so whenever there is a earthquake a horizontal motion and this is recorded like this now in if i have two separate instruments or only one instrument a complex made a complexity increase it all depends on our liking but the principle is i can record horizontal ground movement to vertical ground movement i can record if i have two instruments the speed of rotation i can control manage as i have said once in 24 hours if i can take the record and study or once in a month like that so these are the sensitive instruments to record this is the principle now the records we get is not graph seismogram they call and the instrument we call seismogram graph is not record here here graph means seismograph means entire instrumental setup instrument we can call seismogram means these are records this graph paper which on which these are recorded so we can record principle is if i have a number of recording stations everywhere now using those record i can try to understand where earthquake happened at what depth what is their intensity in a different places etc we construct iso seismal line little later i come to that point iso seismal line we will able to generate and then different area how magnitude differs etc we can yes just now i said the p wave vertical motion this s wave horizontal motion like this like this like this in one instrument how this records we can show so magnitude of the earthquake is expressed that is a quant quantity based on amplitude of seismic waves and the scientist richter proposed this scale it is also called richter scale that is a vibration of the ground millimeter per second based on that vibration intensity of the earthquake is expressed it is also expressed in terms of quality quality means the disturbances a building collapses 
a material just vibrates this are all relative so it is based on the quality of course quality can be correlated with the intensity for example highest director skill say 10 a building can collapse lowest intensity director skill say 2 building may not collapse only some material or just movement is a felt still low, only instrument can record we do not feel so we have both quality and quantity and they express it and that is helpful for us for common person as well as for engineer to decide upon yes now so instrumental only instrument can record in the richter scale if it is 1 to 2 we do not feel at all and then just perceptible felt by only few people not very sensitive only people can but not everybody especially on upper floors of a tall building people feel those who are on the ground floor may not feel at all it is in the richter scale intensity 3 similarly slight earthquake we call it is richter scale 3.5 felt by people in sleep seated on hard surface or in the upper stories of tall building people feel not everybody perceptible felt indoors by many by few outside dishes windows even a fan of material on the table etc we feel that is in the scale a richter scale for rather strong generally felt by everyone sleeping people may be awakened it means 4.5 now i try to generalize my own scale if earthquake in the intensity of 1 to 4 is not that severe not going to damage much if i am in a region of earthquake area where richter scale is 1 to 4 yes i can take according the precautions rather strong then strong trees sway and little swing bells ring some damages form falling of objects etc happens to the strong earthquake if intensity of fayu similarly very strong general alarm walls and plaster cracks building often collapse low quality building etc 5.5 similarly we have destructive felt in moving vehicle accidents chimney collapse building collapses of poorly constructed building collapses like that six now some houses collapse 6.5 obvious ground cracks railroad tracks bent that is disasters at seven like that few building survive only few building survive majority fall they get damaged intensity of 7.5 total destruction at 8 catastrophic earthquake no this is a generalization yes we had a latur earthquake yes we had a buj earthquake but richter scale 5.5 the damage they have caused this much of damage even at this it means this is a generalization the damage which we experience also dependent on so many other parameters it is a generalization on a, an ideal given condition i am trying but locally depending on the local situation the destruction may vary example if this is the ground section earthquake originates if i have several different material different layers the waves on reaching get reaching get refracted so there may be one wave refracted 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 what happens if this is a wave it directly comes it comes here it comes here it comes here and there may be different layer they undergo refraction like that and come in some point i show one more layer 
if I have an earthquake somewhere, this is the location a waves may come directly, hit the ground at a particular point of time. One more wave travels here, they get reflected here and they reach, they come in little later time. A wave refracted and they get reflected, they also come here. It obviously takes some more time. One more, therefore, if it is the question of one wave, P wave, directly comes to get reflected in a boundary, reaches, undergo refraction and then reach, get reflected, then refracted, reach here. So, in a different pulse of time, they reach the given point. Obviously, ground vibration is for a longer time. Although intensity of 5.5 Bhuj earthquake or Latur earthquake, this is the nature. The waves come because they have traveled through different layers and they have undergone a refraction, and reflection, etc. And in different pulse of time, it hits the ground. Duration of vibration is more. And because it is shallow, 10 kilometer, 12 kilometer, etc., not deep, there is S wave also. So, S wave directly come, S wave reflected, S wave refracted, P wave directly, P wave reflected, P wave refracted. So, duration of the earthquake can be 3, 4 seconds, not just 1 second. Therefore, if 4, 5 second duration of vibration is more, although intensity is less, damage can be more. Therefore, the damage, the list I have presented here is for a given condition, a generalized condition. Therefore, if I have the more knowledge about the ground below, the, then I have to take a special precaution. Yes, these are all some active seismic zone. Now important, where I am located? I am located in America or Africa or here or close to this region, etc. Where, for example, we are much away from this active earthquake zone. But these active earthquakes, these are relatively like, these are active earthquake zone. So, depending on where we are, we can take precaution about the structure we are going to construct in the the building design, I have to incorporate that safety factor while designing. You all refer the IS code book and there it is written for 4 intensity of earthquake, what is the safety factor? For you accordingly you design, 6 accordingly you design and therefore, this knowledge help us to decide upon the safety factor and design the very competent uh, structure. Therefore, these are all some of the active areas of earthquake we all have here, all have here. This are active zone of earthquake because these are all plate boundaries. And this is very important how this is constructed. We will study a little later. Now, let us come to India. In India, we have zone 2, 3, 4. So, we have these are different, these are all zone 2, nearly 40 percent of our area is covered with it. Then, we have zone 3, these are all zone 3, zone 4 we have and zone 5 we have here, here, here. It means the, according to the zone, we have to decide upon what should be the safety factor for us and best design we have to come up and it all gives us a guideline. This is not the final one, of course. We need to keep on improving based on the records we get. So, this is the seismic zone of India. Friends, now based on the plate boundary, plate motion, location, we have tried to understand the internal structure, how the structure is responsible for different forces, 
different process like earthquake and which are the different zones of the earthquake. Now we will go further from here onwards.